Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in the Thousand Week Reich, in which we're playing as the Russian Republic. But first, we must talk about Russia in 1952. <clears throat> when the authority of the Soviet Union over its Easter territories started collapsing around 1944, the cities that constituted Siberia and the Far East were left without governance from Moscow. Nobody knew what was happening, and the winter set in. The banner armies of the East were left as garrisons in the cities they were stationed in, and the last pieces of Soviet organization fell away. Japan fell to Allied assault in 1945. Soon after, the Chinese Civil War was restarted, and the Americans realized the situation which the Russian Far East was left in. On March 1946, the U.S. Marine Corps in Asia launched a naval and land offensive into the Soviet territory in Asia, with little resistance managing to capture the Far East. Sergei Wojciechowski, a former White Army general residing in the U.S., was installed as the president of the new Russian Republic based in Vladivostok. Former white emigres, along with their children living in America, moved into the nominally independent country. Contact was made with the cities deeper inland, and they were formally annexed into Russia. The military was set up divisionally from the remnants or remains of the Soviet forces. The country was still nominally independent, but largely under U.S. influence, and the Republic seems to have unlimited terms. A new era for Russia starts here, my friends, but let us begin with winning the Siberian War. The Siberian War, as a term coined to describe how, despite its claims, the government does not in fact control all area up to Lake Baikal, as instead locked in a struggle with supply lines, hostile nature, and local bandits. We must stop this war and march to the border. So, uh, oh, the tutorial? Oh, I'm ready to play. Cool. And here are the National Spirits, American General stuff. Not bad, not great though. But the Siberian War. Even though the lands past the Amur were de jure annexed into the Russian Republic, real life is a matter of in itself. Our information, governance, military does not reach these remote areas. Ask anyone in Chita where they're living and they will not answer the Russian Republic. Bandits try to make a living in the harsh land. Attack our transport columns when we try to wander further than Manchuria. Everyone is in our government knows that the current situation cannot stand as it is. The Siberian War must be won. Russia will march all the way to the Baltic if need to be. And when we also have the Siberian War, we do not have cores on all their territories. We lose stability, get more attrition, and lose war support. So this is it that we have. The clear territory obviously is our core territory, which is basically Kamchatka and Vyatka. Basically all the coast. But then all this area over here, not cord. Obviously there's not a lot of ton of people here, but we don't have cords on this, which is not very good. Very, very not good. But then we also have the brain dream, which is our political power and research speed. Death of Sven, Egyptian martial law, very cool. What we're currently researching was a construction one post-war production line, as well as military construction one. Actually, does Indonesia have any focusy? Rodzeski's uh, dudes. Uh, let's see, Republic of Indonesia. No, they do not, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Konstantin Rod uh, Vladimirovich Rodzevsky escaped Russia just as a young boy. When the empire fell and exiled in Japanese Manchuria, he worked as a lawyer, but also as the leader of the Russian fascist party. His international organization of white emigres vowed loyalty to him, and when he saw his chance in 1904... Or 1944, I should really say. He moved into Soviet lands with his companies of black shirts. When the U.S. established a republic, Zardzewski was among the first to vow loyalty to the nation. Despite heavy protests from U.S. politicians, the Russian fascist party was one of the first and largest political parties recognized in Vladivostok. Now, the mods we're using are obviously State Chester Tool Mob, the Thousand Week Reich Mob, as well as Player of the Peace conferences, conferences only four in total, my friends. And after winning the Siberian War, we shall probably march into Amur Banks. The banks of the Amur and Zaya rivers are the first natural step. Or a natural first step. Station troops on the Amur Bank. I should probably read up on my uh, Russian geography a little bit more. There goes Spain. Very cool. And now we hopefully have decisions here. Station troops. Oh, we need at least seven divisions here. Okay, uh, let's see. So this is Amur. Alright, just move the infantry over here. That's fine. There you go. Have a good time, guys. I thought this one said that we would be getting other things. Enables internal control decisions. All right, cool. There we go. Our purposes have traveled the banks of the Amur and beyond, establishing connections to the capital, informing locals about the Republican government that will soon properly start extending its rule here. Good. Um, I'm not sure what that really did for us, though. We didn't core it, and we're still trying to raise compliance. So, quizzing wins the struggle. Okay, occupation policies, civilian oversight, local police force. No, that's pretty good where we're at. Let's see, who's the garrisons? The Gulag Revolts? That's well, not bad, but take out those support equipment for now. Let's see, and then... Oh, actually, you know what? Just duplicate. There we go. Don't want to screw them up. There you go. That's better overall. We're not making any soldiers. We basically have no manpower almost. Uh, let's do this real quick. Let time go on. Doesn't really matter too much. 
And when we have to go to war with the Soviet Union, we gotta really, really be sure that we're ready for pretty much anything. And by anything, I mean we've gotta be like 40 combat width all the way. Actually, let's make two. We don't have that much supply, so. Expanding into Yakutsk? That's good core. A more base of operations. We will set up an army base of operations in the Moor area to conduct further movements down the river. Pretty good. There goes Bengal. Goodbye, Bengal. Anything else around here? No, we can do promises of peace. What do we have down here? Kona declared premier. So not Zukov, so that's not bad. <clears throat> 150 for er early mobilization. And Zvezda? Let's see. Consumer goods factories kind of hurts us. American companies are allowed to operate in Russia. Congo rebellions crush. Nice. Yusupov Group? Not great, not bad. Anything here? Motors, not bad. Firearms, I like that. 2% consumer goods for minus 25% production cost for guns. That is not too bad. I think I'll go with early mobilization for combat debuts. Very nice, very nice. I wonder when the next technology will be done. It is 52. Let's grab some of this as well. And then we'll go some, for some land auction because we've got to make sure we're ready for whatever happens. But I think we'll go first with early mobilization. Facade democracy? Very nice. Bose or elected? Boza? Boza? Hmm. Marsuchito? Uh, gains a core. I'd like to get cores. Oh, we need Yakutsk. Kushnorsk? Uh, let's, let's do Marsuchita first. We will enter the city of Cheetah and prove anyone who doubted our control over their wrong. Nice. Anything else here? So, did we get the core on? Yes, we did. We might have gotten slightly more manpower. Maybe. Maybe. Early mobilization, thank you, thank you, thank you. We were at three, now we're at four. Not that much better, but slightly with more construction speed because we're definitely going to need it. Oh, oh, the US, oh, the US owns this. Okay, that's kind of cool. Civil unrest in Bulgaria, we do have eight army XP because of, oh, we actually do get more daily army XP, look at that. We have last off here, of course. Genrik Lushkova, Lushkov, Oleg Pantush, Pantukov, as well as Anatoly, which gives us more daily army XP, which is really nice. Huh. Conscription law costs. Oh, that sucks. Right, so that's not too bad then. Let's go over here and asymmetric warfare. Ah. Oh, we technically do have tanks. Asymmetric warfare. Strategic theorem. I like that entrenchment so much. Oh, that. Oh my gosh. 400 some days. Holy crud. That is not bueno, my friends. After marching through Cheetah, though. Um, Cheetah, Cheetah, Cheetah. Well, probably expedition into Yakutsk. Because we don't own Cheetah. Alright, Cheetah. Oh, well, technically, yeah, we do own Cheetah, but... Uh, establish control. We need to establish control first, and we'll do that by establishing soldiers over here. Should be able to get there before we can need to do our next focus. At least some of these guys should need to get over there, so... Hey, okay, we did, look at that. 40,000 manpower, not bad. PRI elected, still 10 factories, which is going to be very difficult. And we should be good to go. All right. Oh, Ulan Uda. Ooh, is that one? Yeah, that's what I thought. There you go. Send, send you guys over there, too. We might still be... Oh, no. Let's just go do expansion to Yakutsk first time. The Yakutsk area is empty and slope. We'll have to iron, iron in our presence in the area extremely strongly. Pretty much. You guys are not looking very good now, are you? Holy cow. There you go. Establish control cheetah. Despite resistance from the bands of local uh, resistance groups and governors, his go local governor cronies are forces of march into the city of Cheetah and the surrounding regions. We are ready to expand our control beyond our borders. Okay, not too bad. And military base in Cheetah. Cheetah is deserving of a military base in barracks. Because I'm trying to go as fast as I can to get as many of the warlords under our control as possible, so... That's pretty much what we're going to try to do here. Military base there, pretty good. Man German spacecraft. And now we need Yakutsk. Uh, Civil War, excuse me, Civil War in Greece, not bad. And then we need Northeast. Oh, good God! Oh, this is not good. Right, this is up here. Oh, it includes up here too. That's not too bad, actually. Wee! Or to go. Wee! That one sucks, but I'm, I'm glad we have got enough time to do that one, so. Good, 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 good. Let you guys follow out or fill out. Uh, do we have any planes here? Some fighters. Pre war fighters, not bad. Uh, 
All right, not bad. How would you guys train? We got enough fuel for now, hopefully. Uh, ah, Vietnam. Chris says his in Chinese intervention. 100 polit more political power, stationing troops, very good. The journey was hard, but the divisions have made it. The Kuz region has been charted, and a census of connections to the capital will be established to make sure we can extend our rule even farther. Good. A revolution in Bulgaria. Very nice, very nice. You guys have done a good job. And what's up next? Ah, artillery, very good. And a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm. Might as well go with that and make some better artillery. Good. We need way more guns. We need a lot of things, man. Oh, baby boy. Casablanca catastrophe. All right. Einstein visits Israel. And is he going to die? He might just die. Baratia forward base. The southern shoals of the Baikal have been reached and contested warlord. Territory lies ahead. We will set up border forward, border forward bases to extend <clears throat> our influence. Pretty good. We get 0.95 political power every single day. Actually, we are a bunch of paternal autocrats, National Alliance of Russian Solidarists. And Wojciechowski's <clears throat> worsening health. The president has told some of his closest aides confidential information about his health. He's reported symptoms including, but not limited to, fever, sweating, and chest pains. His doctors have not identified the source. Let's hope he gets better. Let's hope he does. <clears throat> but I have a very good feeling he's probably not just saying. Let's just call it a hunch. Oh, there goes Franco. He outlived Franco, though. Don't train as well, because we're going to need you to train. Uh, we don't have a lot of cast. We have some cast. Actually, that's quite a bit. That's quite a bit. That's actually really good. Uh, let's see. It's 52 still. Anything for guns? Oh, my goodness. Yes, wartime rifles. Oh, my goodness. That is not good. Hey, look at that. 91,000 manpower. Not terrible. But after this one, truck westward. We'll also do Yakutsk military outpost. The Yakutsk will be useless if we are not able to station troops in the area. We get a core on Yakutsk and northeastern Siberia and political power. So the reason I'm playing as the Russian Republic right now is just because I know in the future they're probably going to get an update or rework. So I want to explore them now to see what they're like and probably figure out how difficult they are actually are as a nation to play as before they get, you know, the update. So, oh, MacArthur's been elected. So that's why I want to play as the Russian Republic. I've already played as the Soviet Union once, or the Union of Soviet Social Republics. So we'll see. And we'll see if Germany falls into civil, like major civil war and gets attacked by the oh, is it Toronto Accords? Toronto Accords, yeah. Oh, baby boy. So can we actually go here? We kind of can, yeah. Yeah, we do fascist, Marxist, Leninist, National Socialist, Paternal Autocrat, or Revolutionary Communist. Well, he's dead. Divided Parliament. Several members of the Russian Parliament have walked out in today's plenary meetings to protest the position of Rozogin, and there have been statements issued about the change of leadership. Other members of Parliament have criticized this group heavily for even allowing Rozogin to become VP in the first place, or allowing the country to function as poorly as it has. Wow, that sucks. That really sucks. Vice President Rozogin takes power. After Wojcicki's passing, the role of head of state has been assumed by the Vice President Anatoly Rozogin. <clears throat> Even more than Wojciechowski, he is a controversial figure, having worked under the Nazis before hearing the call of Russia and returning to govern as VP. Members of the parliament have questions, and it is certain that the presidency of Rosogin would not last. The death of our former president. Prize General President Sergei Wojciechowski has passed away from tuberculosis at the age of 69. Despite doctors' best efforts to treat him, antibiotics did not get to him in time before he succumbed to late-term disease. This will no doubt throw the government into disarray. As unlike Wojciechowski, Vice President Anatoly Rozogin is not nearly as popular. The question of succession will be made even more difficult due to Wojciechowski's effective reign as dictator, which is now ought to be contested. May he rest in peace. Well, we'll do that. I'll, you know, I might just let that go on. Because I want to be able to... Ooh, we're going to need some engineers. <clears throat> Get this focus done first. Arrival of Anastasia Vonsatsky. We've got a surprise guest from the USA. As none other than the three imposing figures of prominent Russian fascist Anastasia Vonsatsky. who has visited Russia before in 1948 under heavy US surveillance, but now he has returned as a permanent resident of Russia once again, bringing him an idea of unifying the Russian fascists and living his days in the homeland once again. Welcome. Arrest that man. Uh, now, that, that leaves a question, like, do we become fascist, or do we still remain with the United States? Because we have Vlasov, he's a fascist, or go with President Zagarev. Growing populism, uh, the coalition with Democrats, raise the Republican militias, more recruitable population factor, which I do like, Jewish communities, monthly population of political power, remove political turmoil, population, integration, or Vlasov, a Republican front, more political power, creating oligarchs, cooperation with the fascists, a state security bureau, which is not bad, not great, but not bad. I hate the attrition stuff. Get more attack and defense on core territory. That makes it a little bit easier. Uh, this would even make it even e further easier. Chinese advisors is not bad. Um, I kind of, I kind of like that one quite a bit though. Planning road, rigged elections. Uh, but you know what? Maybe we'll go with Zagar. So arrest that man. Cool. 
So maybe we'll go with Zagara, just because Vlasov, we played Vlasov before in different campaigns, so maybe we'll try something else that's not Vlasov. So after this one, we're going to go with Wachowski is gone. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. And I guess ballot boxes. Cool. The Parliamentary Factionalism. During the unrest, two opposing factions have formed in the State Duma. Andrei Vlasov and his militaries have become a strong faction within the HDCs, utilizing their military connections and economic assets as leverage over the decadent political class. Opposing them is Pavel Zigarev's political movement, a union of reformists and democrats working for the Republic. This rivalry shall determine the fate of this fragile Republic. Interesting. Uh, well, the last results steadily flowing in, it's clear that Pavel Zagarev has come out on top of his opponent, Andrei Vlasov, and the race for the presidency. As the vote came before the Electoral Commission, the two men seemed neck and neck at many moments, but ultimately it was a populist and reform-driven Zagarev that just strode to the finish line, championing a platform of reforms and policies tailored to the common man. As well as increasing democracy within the Republic, Zagarev's victory was hard fought, even met with reactions of disbelief from the man himself, with the new government being sworn in shortly. <clears throat> President Zagarev addressed his supporters, thanking them for their strong support and commitment to uh, populist ideals. Uh, also, seeing the crown was Vlasov himself, flanked by his cohorts. As Zagarov read from his closing arguments, those in the crowd reported seeing Vlasov walking away from the throng, evidently flustered, muttering under his breath. Vlasov meets, meets with the military. Vlasov, being a former military man, has arranged a meeting with the top members of the Republican military. While the contents of this brief meeting are not known, most can be certain that Vlasov is attempting to secure the support of the military. However, did the army react to his request? They stay neutral. They stay pretty darn neutral for this one. Zagarov meets the president. Even though he's dead. Knowing the fact that the president, Rosogin, is a controversial figure. Oh, that president. Pavel Zigarev has offered the president so, so much needed advice. While these discussions were private, Zigarev most certainly mentioned the possibilities of the establishment's backing for his reformist movement. Saying that the alternative is yet another egomaniac calling the shots with the military threatening the lives of controversial figures, such as the current president himself. Zigarev was ignored. He got his president's blessings. We love getting the president's blessings. And some coffee to drink here. The Duma meeting. Oh boy. Amidst. Oh, oh my, good, my goodness. Chaos and arrest. The state Duma has finally gathered to discuss current affairs. Apparently, President Rosigan suddenly had an unexpected change of heart, announcing his immediate resignation during the meeting. Well, this came as a surprise for the Republic. It was highly convenient that this occurred during its Duma state. Uh, state Duma session. In a highly impro improper manner, the State Duma rushed to organize an internal election to determine who should become the new president of the Russian Republic. A fair election? Zigarov, d dominate the floor? Uh, we don't want to have too many things here. Cool. Empowering populism, a coalition with the Democrats. Empowering populism. With the government in power, it is of the utmost importance to strengthen and foster our populist ideals. Our policies are geared towards the common man, factory workers, fishers, miners, and the farmers in between. All who get their hands dirty and get up in the early in the morning to do it all again. The government stands not for the elites who sits entertaining themselves with the clink of wine glasses and evening soirees. No, for the bottom-up, as <clears throat> the true contributing members of the society. We must reform the, uh, the ideals of the citizenry at large in mind. True change must come to this republic if we see ourselves continue to prosper and survive. Into the future. Goodbye, Vlasov. Oh, it was again. Goodbye, goodbye. Welfare reforms. Agreement with opposition. Oh, and now we are... A, uh, was it social... Oh, we're Republicans. Liberals. Now, does that mean we can change this? Ah, local autonomy. Good. We can actually go to that one. That's actually really nice. End of the Siberian War. Our military base is now extended all the way through our core territories. Nobody can claim that we do not control our country in its complete extent. Thus, Russia is also poised to move west and conquer all the territories that belong to it. Forwards. Remove the Siberian War. Nice. We get better stability, war support, and less division attrition. Awesome, awesome, awesome. But we still have political turmoil, which sucks. Oh, what is our field marshal? Oh, field marshal. Do we really want to hire him as a field marshal after he lost the, war the election? Huh. That was kind of rigged, man. Not going to lie. I was a little rigged. Oh, boy. But whatever, I guess. Pavel? Yes, anything here? No? Okay. Ah, Islamic State is gone. Goodbye. Have a good old time. I kind of want to do welfare reform. Pass or rejected? That seems pretty... For minus 0.5 every day? Holy crap, that's not that great. Oh, agreement with opposition? You lose, lose another 0.5? What does that even do? I'm not sure. Oh, there goes MacArthur. Nice. But I'm not sure that's really worth it, you know? <clears throat> Empowering populism. Very cool. 
and then we'll go with coalition with the Democrats, because I want to get rid of the political turmoil. As a victory for the presidency was rather a long, razor thin margins, our support within the national legislature is few and far between with that in mind. Deputies belonging to our party have constructed a plan to enter in a coalition with the Democrats. Shoring up the support would likely boost our standing within the legislature considerably, allowing us to more easily navigate the passage of key legislation President Ziggurat's government wishes to introduce. The cornerstone of successful government is forming the right connections in parliamentary uh, politics. A strong coalition shall overcome any obstacle presented before. It's only naturally we seek the endorsement and support of the Democrats. So we'll do this one. And we can only get 0.28. That's not great, but we're not really darning to us. The Ziggurat Revolution. I think what I want to do next <clears throat> is truck westwards. Just because we don't, we have cores on our territory, we got rid of the Siberian plan, I want to go to war. And we can do all this stuff as we're going to war, taking out other people. So our internal problems have been dealt with, thus now it is time to move west. We'll end the rule any warlords have over our legitimate provinces and conquer our way to Europe. So that'll be good. So we can free Sakalin maybe eventually. We can get Fortress Sakalin if we really, really need to. Wow, Division Speed plus 50%. Nice. And return order. So we can go to war with... Wait, Cheetah. Cheetah exists. Ultimatum to Baratia. Because we want to get as many cores as possible, as fast as possible. So, so that's not bad. Check westward. And then we will go to Ultimatum to Baratia. Because I want to get rid of them. The Kingdom of Baratia stands in our way. It is up to them to either join us or die. And, ooh, ooh Council Sahara. Who are they uh, by... Uh, Willis Cronkite. Huh. Such a Russian famine. That's not good. Uh, let's see. They're paternal autocrats to military resistance command. Baratia. The VNS partisan front. Wow. Weekly stability goes down by 1%. Republican influence. As well as American construction. Oh, things are falling apart too. And they actually do have a unique focus tree somewhat. So... I think it'd be almost impossible to play as this group, but that's really cool. Wartime Rifles, nice. It is six, 53, not 63, but 53. Happy New Year, everyone. Even though it's been a few months already. Nice, nah, so we got enough guns for now, but not really. That's a lie. Because where we're headed, we're going to need some real thicky infantry. So that's not bad. Uh, engineering, let's grab some more research speed. I should have done that earlier. Forgot about that one. Oh! Where are you guys? Oh! We just straight up annexed you! Wait, wait, what? What? Hello, what the heck? Um. Okay. Sure. Why not? And don't get me wrong, I don't like these militia divisions, but I mean, I'll take the manpower. We have two different types of militia divisions: four combat width with military police, and six combat width or with light infantry. Wow. Okay, that is that is something. All right, all right. Ultimatum to Baratia. Um, so this should just auto bypass, right? Albanian revolution, very cool. Of course, we could also probably. F oh, there we go. A lot of these have been just auto completed. So if you want to return order, Cheetah will not get to enjoy anarchy for very long. They'll we will come and take it back. Freeing Sakalin, ending Altai, destroying Krasnoyarsk. I want to get all stuff done. Get down here and then do a lot of the industrial stuff too, which would be very good for us to do. Takes so long to do, though. Crush Norolsk. Norolsk is nothing more than a petty criminal league posturing as a country. They will be crushed. Norolsk. Do we get cores on this group? Oh, we do. Okay, that's actually really nice. Um, so you guys come up here, then. And I guess all you guys just become our normal infantry. We don't have anything. Oh, my goodness. Because this is the division. It's just 18 combo with the artillery and engineers, but oh, baby boy. Japan renounces the right to war. I guess that's pretty good. All right, mechanized computing is very nice. Let's go to... Oh, oh we should have went to war economy before. Ah, oh, gosh darn it. Minister of Economy? Oh, we can choose political power. Consumer goods factors goes down by 10%. That's not bad. Uh, goes up by 5% and lose construction speed. Heck no. Conservative, orthodox, uh, economist, apolitical, Kenyan, economics. economics. And we get more daily political power. So that we got to go that way. Wow. wow. Wow, that's not bad. I like that a lot. Very nice. Uh, go and train if you need to as well, I guess. Even though we have no guns. We literally have no guns. Oh! Von Ribbentrop has been declared new Fuhrer? When does that happen? Maybe have, maybe every time. I don't know. I don't. I haven't played Germany in a while, so... The Great Power Struggle. Very cool. Very, 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 very nice. Crush Norsk. Hopefully they just give up like the other group did. That'd be really cool. Oh, and there you go. The Germans have a war.
You know what, screw it, don't even try doing that. What's wrong with these guys, Norilsk? Looks like the flag of Samara. They're about Ivan Yumashev. Yumashev? Isn't he an admiral? Yeah, he's a grand admiral. Wow, look at that. Love political power, naval experience gained, capital ship attack, last affair capitalist. Um, I'll be honest, like that that really sucks where he's at. Oh, unorganized warlords. Oh, baby. Central Russian famine, unchecked capitalism. Nice. Formal end to cannibalism. Unregulated capitalist gulags. Wait. What? And they do have a unique focus tree, so that's pretty cool. Oh, baby boy, that is gone. Dealing with the Norlis Norlskians. Norlsk is currently governed by a nominally independent warlord. Everyone but their leadership must know that they are part of Russia. And will soon prove this. We can either demand that they submit to our rule as an autonomous zone, which will help us control it, or we can demand direct annexation and integration of their armed forces into the Unitary Republic. Will they be interested in autonomy? Complete annexation? Um, I don't know what this does. I don't want them to be a puppet. I want to directly annex them. I don't mind going to war. How many divisions do they have? Um... Okay, so let's go with interested in autonomy because maybe they'll accept that. If they don't, I might just reload the save and we'll figure out what they're going to do. So maybe that one. We'll see what that one does. And then we'll do up next, ending Altai or Crest Noyarsk. Uh, we probably want to do Altai first. Altai is a communist disgusting amalgamation and we will end it. And they will say, Germans crushing Ukraine. Nice. USSR, hopefully he's not going to do too much. Keep expanding your guns. The guns got to get better than this. And Southern Uprising. Here come the Poles. They submit. Our strongly worded letter has brought success. The government of Norilsk has accepted our demands and they're now a ton of special governance area in Russia. Oh, they become a puppet? Oh. Uh, a puppet, man. I don't know. Are there ways to integrate this group? I need, We need those. We need those resources. Like, holy crap. Um. So maybe we'll go back and maybe just fully annex them. All right, everyone, so Norilsk defies us. The dirty autocrats and Norilskian lands have not gotten common sense. They would rather fight than submit to their legitimate Russia. Now, like I said, like, having them as a pup is cool and all, but we need those factories. We only have 16 right now, so... And we need the core territory as, as well, so, I mean... As much as I want to be, you know, democratic, or, like, at least have the facade of democracy here, that's not good enough. No, we, we need their territories. We have to have their territories. Puppets are cool and all, and then maybe there's a way... For us to like peacefully unify or integrate them, but we gotta go to war, man. And besides, they're going to war. It looks like people just give us stuff too, so which is something we desperately, desperately need. We love Mexico. We love Canada. Uh, America, please can, can you send some supplies as well? Oh, uh oh, there you go. Union State, Norway. War reaches the fjords. Very cool. Very cool. Strategic theorem will be very good. And we're still going to end all type. Russian populism. Very nice. So we get point zero six every day. All sense of war. We have no stability. Go figure. That's not good. Not good. You guys looking really bad. Uh, just go up there, maybe. Where are you guys at? We've lost 10 guys, which is 560. That's not too bad. Oh, wait. Ukrainian Civil War. They already have one Civil War, right? So they fell into Civil War again. What is... What are these guys doing? He's got, he's got one heck of a beard, man. A Grand Warlord. Focus on the offensive. Oh, God. Factor on how many divisions a country aims to produce. 50%. Oh, baby boy. Oh, man. That's a... Holy crap. That's a lot of manpower. They don't have that many factories like us. But they probably still have more than us. Hungarian Revolution. Up to 57. Jesus Christ. This is going to be... This might be a little bit too difficult. <laughs> uh, keep going, guys. There's no stopping here. Last offset, so... Montero Coup. Alright. Uh, that's only... Oh my goodness. That's only halfway through. Liberal victory in Canada. Where's the... Um, Did I give you guys orders? No, I didn't. Oh. That's really bad by me. That's really, 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 really bad. Uh, guys, you can probably help out here, too, you know. Oh, uh, I guess you're not that strong anyway, so. Slovak Spring, very cool. And they only have militia, so that's pretty good. This is all, should be core territory, right? We have a claim. Oh, god dang it. We have a claim on it. Ending Altai, nice. Destroying Krasnoyarsk. The fate of Krasnoyarsk will be nothing less than doom. Do we seriously don't get cores on this? Maybe we, should, maybe we should have kept him as a puppet. I don't know. It just... They defy us. Then we'll go to war. The dirty autocrats in Altai lands have not gotten common sense. They would rather fight than submit to the legitimate Russia. Here is a conscript. Because we're only 5%. Holy crud. Keep going, guys. Keep going. This is taking way too long. But since we're taking a while anyways here, 
That just means that we can do another focus after Krasnorsk regarding the economy, uh, getting rid of political uh, instability and stuff like that. But strategic theorem is gone, which is nice. Strategic redeployment, more defense, soft attack, and organization. That is very, very good for us. Incredibly good. No stopping here. Polish democracy restored. Nice. They're still fighting, but give it up. Lviv. Operation. Single action receiver. Keep oh, that's actually a little bit ahead of time, huh? Get more defensive breakthrough. And we'll grab some more research speed, too. Ooh, that's going to take a while to do, though. The Prague Uprising. Checks. Checks, checks, checks. Nice. Good, good, good. Head on down here. Oh god, we seriously have to take every single tile. Oh my goodness, not good. Not good. Go, horses, go. You're the one thing that doesn't really use fuel. <laughs> ah, Iraqi oil nationalized. Cool. Oh, and there goes all those guys over there. God, can someone else give us some more equipment, please? Wow, the shoot stall is looking pretty good. We're just wait until the low countries rebel, though. Oh, Daddy Himmler. Goodbye, Norway. Mediterranean Union. Slovenian Declaration. Come on, guys. Keep going. Keep going. Don't stop. Please don't stop. Ah, they're almost gone. Okay, there we go. Hopefully, we get a way to integrate them. There should be some way. Oh, guys, maybe if they were just a puppet, then maybe that would have been better, but... If, it, if that was better, then maybe we'll go back and I'll fix that up, maybe. <clears throat> Dealing with the Krasnoyarskians. Krasnoyarsk is currently governed by a nominally independent warlord. Everyone but their leadership must know that they are part of Russia, and we will soon prove this. We can either demand they submit to our rule as an autonomous area, which will help us control it, or we can demand direct annexation and integration of their armed forces into the Unitary Republic. I don't want to... Like... Do we get to core this stuff eventually? Like, this doesn't make any sense. You should be able to core this stuff pretty quickly, but... Let's see, moving through Novosibirsk, the Soviet border. Oh, maybe we should have waited for this then. Hmm. Hmm. Complete annexation? Because we need we need factories, so. The uh, Russian military industrial complex, I want to do that, but the Ziggurat Revolution. With political stability secured and a government adequately strengthened, it's now time for the nitty gritty of President Ziggurat's plans. Referred to as the Ziggurat Revolution by the President's allies, the move calls for a three pronged approach. The passage of the key land reform, a proposal that is sure to be an uphill battle within the legislature. The drafting and raising of, uh, of uh, Republican militias to form the backbone of a true standing army and the establishment of Jewish communities in our city centers. The latter surely be contested by more right wing groups within a republic, specifically Vlasov and his cohorts. Obstacles all the same, each is able to overcome with just the right amount of effort and intuition. Let us embark upon the path of true betterment for a young nation. But even then, like, we do get extra compliance every single day, so that's not too bad. They defy us, uh, the dirty autocrats and, the, and their lands have not gotten common sense, so they'd rather fight us than submit to the legitimate Russia. So, actually, this should be going up by pretty quickly, or relatively quickly, even though we're out of guns too, so. Because we are in local autonomy, which is very nice. 8%, 8.7 it should go up to, or 8.6, I guess. So it's not too bad, it could be a lot worse, actually, so. Actually, in the meantime, garrisons, uh, if you remove this, your suppression does not change. And if we do this, get more military police. There you go. And we lost all the army XP we already gained, but whatever. That should do okay for us. Let's get our guys down here first, too, so. And actually, do we have our planes still training? No, they're done training. There we go. Now, 400 of you guys. I guess if you really want to. Oh, you're still training over there, that's, which is fine. Whatever. Uh, what are you guys doing? Army 3, you're just kind of hanging out, right? That's fine with me. Yeah, get our guys over here. I don't want to really hurt them too much. The Ziggurat Revolution, a clean blank slate for Russia. Cool. Jewish communities, uh, as much as I want to do that one, recruitable population would be nice, building slots would be nice. Russian industrial, military industrial complex. The military industrial complex is vital to survival. We have to improve it one way or the other to march westwards. Cool. Apparently, probably which Russian will. Oh, we might still be able to do that. Because with American Steel, we got to make sure that Americans still like us somewhat, so. I'd love to go down there, but whatever. Improve worker conditions. 
You know, go and do that one. Himmler removed. Himmler resigned. Oh no. What happened to him? Alright, let's just go on in. We need their land, so. Nice. God, we need so many guns. Can someone please give us more Lendlies? Yes. Novosibirsk, yes. Rifles. We'll take whatever we can get. Anything that we can get. American support, yes. A shipment has arrived from our friends in the U.S. with thousands of rifles and other articles of infantry equipment to aid us in our fight. That's certainly welcome. You know, we might have to kill off Novosibirsk anyways, but whatever. What is Konev doing? We're not entirely sure. Zagadev. This is probably the more difficult route to take, but whatever. Oh, we do have uh, mechanized two here, so. <clears throat> Could I snow ours? Is that ours? Huh. Keep going, keep going. You doing okay, guys? You doing okay? They're very weak. We're not that strong either, so. That's what I would call probably just a gigantic mess. Head on in, boys. If was going down here, it might have been better. Nice. Cool, we can do both of these, but we can do that freeing Sakalin, but uh, removing instability. I do want to be able to integrate our frontier, so maybe that's exactly what we want. Jewish communities. Uh, political power, it's not super necessary right now, but <clears throat> I guess we do Jewish communities. Despite being so isolated from the rest of Russia, many Jewish refugees from the west have gradually made their way into our nation. Seeking help and a chance to live peacefully, many Jews have settled into the areas like Vladivostok, as well as various other cities. Many have been welcomed with hospitality and care, while some fell, still face harsh harshment, harassment, and ridicule. Conditions such as the latter are unacceptable within our nation and must be removed from our society. President Zagarov has drafted plans to foster dedicated Jewish communities within the nation, where their members can be free of scorn or open disdain and be able to live freely. Very nice. American support. We love America. More war support. Thank you, America, because we're going to need your help when we get killed by the Soviet Union. Just saying, America. Just saying. But happy 1954, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. And let's grab some more research speed. I love research speed. And then some more decryption. These guys are literally just going to die here, aren't they? Yep. Oh, oh they almost died. There was like 1% there. 1%. The 1%. You guys actually win there. That'd be kind of cool. Alright, what else? No stability. Pretty normal. Uh, that one stuff is okay. Ooh, women in the workforce. We like women in the workforce. We get more population. Because we're going to need more population. we got some more army XP too, which is pretty nice too. I like that. Oh, good job guys. Good encirclement. Good encirclement. We actually have a little bit of air XP too. But mostly because of... um. Oh, they're going to die here, aren't they? Nice. Going over there. Um... Pilot exercises, which, which is fine with me. Jewish communities, and then I'm going to go over here and uh, American Steel. The U.S. is our greatest ally. We, they can help us achieve things that we would never be able to reach on our own, such as a large navy or tank fleet. Oh, thank God for America. Jewish communities. We love the Jewish communities. Uh, equipment contractor. I don't want to do this. I don't want to hurt consumer goods because it's already so bad. Oh. oh, look at that. They gave us loads of guns. Yes, please. Yes, America. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, they signed a peace agreement. That's nice. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just do this. This is gonna hurt us, but whatever. We're gonna need, we're gonna need these thicky divisions no matter what happens. So, uh, guys, just go help them out down here. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They had 82 rifles left. Wow, that's really bad. All right, Altai is next, and we have a little bit of fuel. Look at that. And also, a reason why I wanted to go to war with these guys, because we might be able to get more resources as well. And resources are so incredibly crucial. So we got slightly more aluminum. And up here, we got nothing else. God dang it. <laughs> oh, man, that sucks. Oh, my goodness. It's all right, though. Treaty of Honolulu. Very cool. Keep building, building, building. And we'll go to war very, 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 very soon. We need another field marshal here, too. Victor, oh, you're an uh, old guard or whatever. Fine, whatever. Oh, goodness gracious. What do we have here? Improved anti tank. Medium tanks. Yeah, we got some of this stuff. 60s, main battle tanks. We don't have, we don't have the production for it. Uh, go with... Can we get any more stuff here? Maybe no? Hmm. Get some more decryption then. That, that, helps, that literally helps you out in combat. Obviously, we don't have that much, but... We'll see what happens. You guys are still moving. You're taking up all the fuel that we have. I don't want to port anymore because we're already pretty lacking in civvies. I mean, we should have built some. Oh, we can integrate these guys. Okay, that's kind of cool. Project Russian Glory. Okay, so that's not bad. Not bad. Uh, support military bases. Oh, we could use another factory. But we need to move through Novosibirsk. Uh, exists. Khrushchev is not the current country leader. So we need to get rid of these guys. Huh. 
We want to get down here pretty quickly as well, though. We need to integrate these places, so... Raise the Republican militias. Despite guidance from Washington on military affairs, the current state of our armed forces is very so far. Some analysts, as well as generals within the Defense Ministry, state that our republic technically doesn't have a proper army at all. The natural solution to this, without going too overboard and causing undue strain to our budget, would be the raising of sizable, yet local militias dedicated to the defense of individual towns and cities of our republic. With such ideals, the common man will have a feeling of patriotism and commitment to protecting his nation, and stood within him, alongside granting the added benefit of safeguarding his local citizens. Such a plan can serve as an adequate solution for the time being, as more cohesive strategies and systems for national defense are developed in the future. Very good. Uh, how many guns do we not have? Oh, we've got enough for now. This is good. Anti-tank, of course. <sighs> we need more military factories. Actually, these guys are looking not too bad, actually. But, like all good things, we gotta kill our enemies off. Salchak Toka. Would anyone else like to give us more guns, please? Oh, Samuel Cumming? Cumming? Oh, boy. Oh. North Sea Naval Exercise. America's probably gonna go to war eventually. Uh, just go to Kaisel, I guess. Not bad. No fuel again, but whatever. Alright, you guys move into... Oh, Kimarovo! I don't know where Kimarovo Just go there. These guys have been all cut off. That's great! Because I'm planning on getting 40 combo with infantry eventually. Uh, or at least attempting to. After this one, Latin reforms. Uh, I want to get the extra factory first. Russian will. No. Support American military bases. Oh, 56 days for a single military factory. We should allow the U.S. to station more troops on our territory and support their military bases here. Stronger cooperation is needed. Oh, cool. The Soviet border, we are not going to touch that thing. No, 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 no. Nice. So we're done with all that stuff. Let's grab some more encryption. Plus one, not bad. Finn Gale elected. Very cool. Oh, going to Alt Altaisk. Very nice. Um... War propaganda. We could use some more war propaganda, I guess. Nuclear war support. Nice. Hey, these guys are in, been encircled. Nice. Oh, it's six division. That's quite a few, actually. Stop hurting our guys. Don't hurt our horses. Those horses are precious. Goodbye. We have lost. Oh, this is glitch. We can't see. It. Okay, how many have we lost in the past twelve months? Less than 500. That's actually pretty good. I'd say that's pretty darn good, man. Pretty darn good. Altai is gone. Thank you very much. Wait, we can't take all this stuff? What the heck? There's no one else in the war, though. Very strange. Nice. That's pretty good, I'd say. That's pretty darn good. Now, Novosibirsk. Papa Novosibirsk. You might have to die a little bit. For our amusement, of course. But after this one, we'll probably go with what? Hmm. Can I be canceled? How do we do this one then? Germany's dying, but that's fine, whatever. I do want to get to Prus Project Russian Glory, because that'll give you war support defense, defense of core territory using war support once we go to war with the Soviet Union. We'll probably go with land reforms, but let's get this one done first. Nice. Land reforms. Much of the current situation with, with regards to land ownership can be only described as archaic. Landed elites who hardly truck across the vast tracts of land they hold title to hardly even visit such properties, leading to massive disgruntlement among laborers and farmers who could use such plots to boost agricultural diversity and output. The obvious solution is to draft immediate land reform, buying out these plots which lay constricted in the hands of these men and re redistributing them among the commoners. Naturally, protests by these elites will be uh, by the dozens, but if they don't like it, then they can take their fortunes and settle America somewhere. Surely, if they're willing to choke out vast areas of the virgin lands of Siberia, then they won't mind moving elsewhere. Pretty much. And there goes America. Wow. I hate to be in Germany right now. Nice. Get another factory. Land reforms. Thank you very much. And any other event? Anything like that? Probably not. So maybe we'll end with this uh, video. Oh, look at that. Oh. With another focus reading. The New Life Theory. This looks extremely hard. Fanatical Revolts. Plus 30% division defense on core territory. It does not matter if you literally have only one tile there, though. Just because if you get attacked hard enough, you can't get any more organization, and then you'll die. Uh, let's see. We'll read one more. I want to do moving through Nova Sabiris. I don't know how we can do this one. They cannot exist. We might have to take them out manually, maybe later on. Sherman Tanks. Naval Safe. Uh, attracting Investors. Uh, I think the next one we'll do, maybe off screen, is remove 
instability. With most of our reforms being finalized, there still remains a lingering air of instability within our republic. Political groups and supporters of Andrei Vlasov continue to agitate and flare up conflict, as well as protests against the government. We must resolve these lingering problems by any means necessary. Funding to more to our internal affairs agencies, consulting with Washington on learning how to better deal with such issues, as well as various other measures. By concentrating our efforts on resolving instability, we can allow much greater focus on completing the po policies of President Zagara's revolution, bringing our nation into a true age of prosperity and modernity. But if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I'll see you tomorrow, as we might end up in a war against the USSR, and hopefully we can get a few more pieces of equipment for our military. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day!